back uh, so far we are discussing uh, about the basic uh, basics of predicate logic and we started with uh, what we mean by a quantifier and we introduced two different quantifiers that is uh, one is for all x and the second one is there exists some x. So in a way we are trying to extend a propositional logic with these two quantifiers then uh, in the last few classes we discussed about uh, uh, various properties of quantifiers uh, and then uh, we introduced uh, a concept called as a scope of a quantifier when uh, a particular kind of variable is considered to be free when a particular variable is considered to be bound and these are the things that we have discussed uh, in the last few classes. So today we will be talking about some of the uh, other important properties of quantifiers and then uh, uh, basically we will be talking about the syntax of uh, predicate logic. Uh, so what we will be doing today is uh, we will be talking about uh, various things related to quantifiers like uh, what do you mean by saying that substituting a term uh, with a variable uh, sorry uh, vari when, when do you say that a variable is substituted by uh, another term a constants etc. So uh, what are the ways to substitute etc and then we will talk about instantiation etc and then uh, we will go into the details of uh, various kinds of translations. So translations in predicate logic so given an English language sentence how do we translate it into the language of predicate logic is the one which we are going to see in this class and then uh, at the end of this lecture we will be talking about uh, a particular thing which is uh, which is called as uh, uh, I mean each and every formula will have its own corresponding uh, uh, tree diagram. So uh, each and every formula comes up with its own unique tree diagram which we will be drawing uh, in a while from now. So to start with we will begin with the concept of substitution or instantiation. So this is the instantiation is the one which you often come across in the, in the next few classes especially when an universal quantifier is instantiated then we call it as universal instantiation and then the same way existential quantifier is instantiated that means one particular instance of this existential quantifier we call it as instantiation. So what do you mean by saying that uh, what do you mean by saying that substitution. So let us consider a simple formula phi if phi is a formula and v is considered to be a variable. So you have to note that uh, we have constants we have variables we have predicates terms etc and all. So if phi is a formula and v is a variable then we usually write phi of v to denote the fact that uh, v occurs free in phi. Suppose if you write uh, like this phi and v so then this v occurs as free. So only when this variable occurs as free then we can substitute with another term uh, another constant a b c etc and all. So, so phi of v uh, uh, denotes a fact that v occurs free in that particular kind of formula phi. Suppose if you take t as your term. Uh, then phi of t or to put it more explicitly it will be phi v given t. So it is a result of substituting t for all the free occurrences of v in phi. So this is uh, this is considered to be a free variable and this variable whenever you have a variable like x y z etc and all just like saying that uh, some some men uh, all men etc and all. So that if you replace it with uh, some kind of constant such as Socrates or uh, Manmohan Singh or anything so then it will become T. So usually we represent it as this thing a variable V is represented by another term uh, T. So usually we write it like this V given T this means that the variable V is substituted by so this is uh, to be precise we will write it in this particular kind of way. So this means a formula which consists of a variable v is substituted by a term t when you can substitute a term t especially when this variable is considered to be free. So when do we say that a variable is considered to be free uh, in a uh, uh, within the scope of a quantifier uh, uh, a variable is considered to be free if it is not uh, within the scope of this particular kind of quantifier. So then that uh, term that variable is considered to be free. 
So now this is a substitution instance of uh, uh, this thing now we will be talking about some kind of strategy for substituting these terms for the given variables. So we call that phi t uh, as an instance of phi phi of v. So if phi of t contains no free variables then we call it as ground instance of uh, phi. So in the last uh, in the last class we discussed about this particular kind of thing a ground formula is a formula which does not contain any variables. So if phi of v v is not considered to be a, uh, a variable that means like x y z etc and all in our language of predicate logic then we call it as a ground ground kind of formula or the term exists in that kind of formula is called as a ground term. So in the same way closed formula is a formula which does not contain any free variables so that means uh, uh, you can make substitution only when it is not a ground formula or a closed kind of formula. So it has to have a free variable and that free variable will is going to be substituted by a term t and that is represented as an instance of that particular kind of formula phi of v. So now if uh, phi, uh, phi of t contains no free variables then we call uh, call it as ground instance of phi it would be like uh, another constant phi of c etc and all. so that is called as a ground instance of phi. So now if the term t contains an occurrence of some variable x which is not necessarily free in t then we say that t is substitute, substitutable for a particular kind of variable v in that formula phi of v if all the occurrences of x in t remains free in that particular kind of formula phi usually we represent it as phi v given t that is what we have discussed earlier in the last slide. So now there is some kind of procedure which we follow for making this kind of substitution instance of a given formula which consists of a free variable. So the first step that we will be following is this that first we will be dropping the initial kind of quantifier and then after dropping that quantifier then we will be talking about the instance of that particular kind of quantifier. So now we replace all the free kind of variables with some kind of desired constants for example let us consider this particular kind of formula to start with we start with simple kind of formulas let us say you have a formula there exists some x px so now uh, now one instance of uh, first what we will do is we will drop this kind of quantifier then we will talk about this particular kind of term which follows after this quantifier now so now what we are doing is you are replacing this x with another term t so now in the second step what happens with this find the formula is this thing p t so it is like uh, there exists some x such that uh, some p x x is intelligent some iit case students are intelligent for example so so if you uh, one instance of that one is this that some ram ramesh etc are in uh, are considered to be intelligent so what exactly we are trying to do here is is that first what we are doing is we are eliminating this quantifier and then we are substituting the variable that occurs here that is x uh, with some kind of uh, uh, constant usually uh, all constants are also considered to be terms here so that is why x is replaced by some kind of constants t this constants represent some kind of individual uh, objects in the domain so for example if you want to do this particular kind of thing px implies qx and then one substitution instance of this one is like this x is substituted by t so now uh, so first what we will do is we will do like this we will eliminate this quantifier and then this is going to be the thing and then in the second step what we will do is we substitute it with some kind of constant so this is what it becomes so now this is considered to be an instance of this one it is like for saying that uh, all crows are black and one instance of that one is uh, like this uh, you might have seen you, you have seen one particular kind of crow which is considered to be black 
so that is considered to be one instance of that one in the same way if you say all metals expands upon heating then you observe one particular kind of metal and that also st that started expanding and that is considered to be an instance of all metals expands upon heating. So in this way we can substitute it with this particular kind of in this way first you drop the quantifiers and then replace the variables with some kind of terms then it will become a substitution instance of a given formula. So only quantified sentences can have substitution instances either it should be starting the formula should be starting with either existential quantifier or the universal quantifier so that you can substitute it. For example if you take this into consideration this one will not have any substitutional substitution instance for example not for all x px you cannot simply say that this is this will become not pa and all so this is not permitted here first what you need to do is you need to convert it into some kind of standard form so that is so this will become there exists some x not of px this can be substituted this will have some kind of substitution instance but not this particular kind of formula so now this will become not of pa where this a has to be new so we'll talk about these rules a little bit later so there is a lot of difference between not of for all x px um, uh, there is a lot of difference between uh, this thing for all x px and there exists some x uh, px and all so, so these uh, kinds of uh, formulas will not have any substitution instance so you need to simplify this formula then only you can substitute uh, uh, x for x with some kind of constant you cannot straight away substitute and say that it is not p a or something like that so that is kind of wrong substitution so that is what we are trying to say not of for all x fx is not considered to be a quantified sentence you have to simplify that formula and then it will become some kind of a quantificational sentence because it starts with negation of the quantified so so this formula will become there exists some x not of fx and then you can start substituting for this ground variable x with some kind of term. Now let us consider some other examples of substitution there is some kind of strategy which we follow here for example if there exists two quantifiers for all x and for all y and you have f x y then what is this procedure that we followed earlier first you need to drop this quantifiers and then you have to uh, substitute it with some kind of term uh, which is considered to be a constant so now if you take this example into consideration for all x for all y f x y and then you drop the second quantifier and then substitute it uh, y with uh, some kind of constant a and that is considered to be a wrong kind of substitution so why because you need to drop there should be some kind of convention that will be following and that convention should be like this so the formula is like this uh, p uh, x uh, y hmm. so something like uh, p x y and all so now what I am trying to say here is is that suppose if you write like this you drop this kind of quantify and then you substitute it wherever you have y with some kind of letter b or something like that so then this is considered to be wrong and all so what is the correct kind of substitution is this one first you need to drop the quantifiers that exist in the starting point and all not the innermost quantifier so this is the outermost quantifier and innermost one so you need to drop this one first you need to move from left to right so that you will be following some kind of convention so initially what we will be doing is we will be substituting this one for all y uh, you drop this particular kind of quantifier and then wherever you uh, wherever you find x you substitute it with c and then you keep it as, as it is now in the second step you can uh, substitute the variable that exists here y with uh, some kind of constant so now this will become p c another letter so now this will become an instance of this one 
so for all x for all y p x y uh, x and y are related in some way so that one instance of that one is p c d so there uh, there should be some kind of convention that uh, usually we will be following so that is first you drop the initial uh, whatever occurs in the beginning and then you go you move towards the right hand side and then you drop this quantifies and then make these kinds of substitutions but this is considered to be a wrong substitution so in the same way if you consider the third second example there exists some y for all z for all x u y and l x z implies l x y etc and all and then you are, you are given one substitution instance wherever you find a variable y you are substituting it with a constant c. So now in this case uh, what will happen is, is that so you need to drop the quantifier uh, that occurs in uh, that you will find it in the beginning of this formula that is there exists some y. So when you drop that particular kind of formula wherever you find uh, a formula with uh, uh, this uh, subscript y you substitute it with this, led, this constant c. So now this formula will become first you need to eliminate there exists some y then this formula will become for all z for all x and u y y becomes c now that is why it becomes u c and l x z remains as it is and then in l x y you substituted y with a letter c so that is why it becomes l x c. So this is the way we substitute it with some kind of variables are substituted with constants so there is some kind of order which we follow. So what we got from this one is, is that the, the procedure is simple so the first you need to eliminate the quantifiers uh, and then uh, you substitute the variables uh, with some kind of uh, constants and that will become a substitution instance of like some kind of generalized kind of state for example if you say all men are mortal and one substitution instance of, instance of that one is uh, some uh, there exists some x. Socrates is mortal for example he is considered to be an instance of that where Socrates is considered to be the constant which is substituted in uh, substituted for the variable x. So this is what we mean by substitution and then we will let us uh, discuss something about different kinds of laws of quantifier distribution. So these laws we will use it uh, uh, some of the decision procedures that we will be using it later where we will be talking about validity consistency etc and all. So there we will make use of this particular kind of loss. So the first law says that if you negate the quantifier universal quantifier followed by a formula p x and that is the same as there exists some x not p x. So this formula needs to be written in this way so there is some mistake in that slide. So for all x p x so this is same as uh, what you do here is, is that you push this negation inside and the negation of the quantifier will become the other one there exists some x and then you push this quantifier push this negation inside and this will become this one. So now we can write uh, this formula uh, in this way. So the moment if I write like this that means with both sides it happens. So this will become there exists some x not of x. So the negation of the universal quantifier will become an existential quantifier with the negation of a particular kind of formula. So the other thing which uh, which you will you are going to notice in this formula is this thing as uh, so a distribution over the conjunction uh, for example if you say for all x p x and q x if and only if that is uh, same as for all x p x and for all x q x. So it is just nicely distributed over the conjunction universal quantifiers are distributed over the conjunction whereas existential quantifier the next one third formula is distributed over uh, the disjunction that is there exists some x p x or q x uh, is same as there exists some x p x if you taken it alone uh, in isolation that is same as this one there exists some x p x or there exists some x q x and uh, the other way around also it happens there exists some x p x or uh, sorry for all x p x or for all x q x is same as uh, for all x p x or q 
q x. So, in the same way uh, existential quantifier P A, uh, there exists some x P x and q x is uh, same as there exists some x P x and there exists some x q x. So, it is distributed when when you are trying to use the same kind of quantifies and all it distributed over conjunction as well as disjunction. So, now the there will be some kind of problem if you take into consideration two different kind of quantifies and all if the quantifies are same if you are using the same universal quantifies it does not make any difference in which order you use for example if you say for all x for all y p x y is more or less same as for all y for all x p x y. So, let us consider a domain which consists of natural numbers and x and y are considered to be two any two numbers then if you take any number into consideration 1 and then the relation uh, let us consider relation as greater than uh, a greater than or less than for example for, ti for time being you take it as less than. So, now if you take any number into consideration let us say 2 which is always going to be less than the other number if you are taking natural numbers as your domain. So, 2 is always less than 3. So, for all x if it happens for all y if p x uh, is less than y then uh, if it is same as for all y for all x p x y uh, then uh, this particular kind of property holds. So, here the idea here is is that the order is not going to uh, cause us a kind of problem here. So, for all x for all y p x y is same as for all y for all x p x y in the same way if the quantifiers that you are using are more or less same that means they are of the same type either existential quantifier or the universal quantifier and that is not going to make a big difference there exists some x there exists some y p x y is same as there exists some y there exists some x p x y. It is like let us say x and y are related in this way x is a brother of y for example. So, you are saying that there exists some x there exists some y x uh, p x y means x is brother of y n. that is same as there exists some y there exists some x again x is brother of y n. it does not make any big difference uh, when you uh, interchange the quantifies provided when you are when you are using the same kind of quantifies. So, if you use different kind of quantifies then as you see in the third kind of uh, inference uh, it happens only in one way the other way round it will not happen. So, that is there exists some x for all y p x y in place for all y there exists some x p x y, but the other way round it will not happen that is for all y there exists some x p x y does not imply there exists some x for all y p x y. Again you take into consideration the same example x is a brother of y p x y stands for let us assume that x is a brother of y. So, there exists some x for all y where x is considered to be brother of y it is like in the in the context of church for example that fellow is considered to be brother of all the people that is why they, they call him as brother a father or something like that. So, that is same as for all y there exists some x that is same p x y, but the other way round for all y there exists some x p x y does not imply there exists some x and for all y. So, the explanation is like this the first one says the relative scope of two universal quantifies is going to be irrelevant that happens in the second case also as long as you use the same quantifies it is not going to make a big difference. So, uh, the relative scope of uh, the universal quantifies does not make any big difference in all. So, this is all irrelevant the second one says that relative scope of existential quantifiers in the same way is also considered to be irrelevant. What is relevant here is, is that whenever you use uh, two different kind of quantifiers then uh, the meaning changes. So, that is why in it happens only in one way. In the, in the case of third example there exists some x for all y p x y implies for all y there exists some x p x y, but it is not the case that vice versa is not true. So, that is for all y there exists some x p x y does not imply there exists for all y p 
x y the scope is going to be relevant only when you use uh, two different kinds of quantifiers otherwise this is going to be the same thing as long as you do not change the uh, p x y kind of uh, the formula p x y does not change. So in, in whatever way you use uh, in whatever order that you, you are going to use it is going to be the same thing. So this is what with respect to loss of uh, quantifiers with respect to the scope. So now let us talk about uh, some kind of uh, translations that you uh, commonly come across uh, in the language of predicate logic. So before that we will talk about uh, the two quantifiers for all x and there exists some x. So for all x uh, is represented as uh, this thing for, uh, for example if you say that for all x x is mortal uh, then you represent it as for all x just a letter p x. So that means what does it mean to say that for all x x is mortal that means for every x whatever x that you are going to take into consideration x that x has to be mortal it cannot be the case that uh, there is one particular kind of x you have chosen and that x is not considered to be mortal. So that means whatever you pick it up and that has to be having that has to be have this particular kind of property so that is mortality. So that means for each x x is considered to be mortal or the other way around of saying this thing is, is that for any x that you are taking into consideration x has to be mortal. So exists x uh, is uh, like this uh, it happens only for, uh, for some x at least one x is considered to be mortal then you represent it as there exists some x. So that means there exists an x such that x is considered to be mortal that is as good as saying the same thing as there is at least one x the sum is usually represented as at least some at least one particular kind of thing has a property uh, something then you say that uh, we call it as there exists some x p x. So let us uh, uh, try to talk about some kind of translations uh, so we have to familiarize ourselves with the translation why because uh, given an English language sentence we should be in a position to unambiguously transfer uh, the lang uh, English language sentence into the language of predicate logic and then once you translate it into the language of predicate logic then all the other things will follow whether it is uh, the formula is considered to be a valid formula that means uh, it is true in all uh, interpretations uh, in a given domain uh, or whether that formula is a called, uh, considered to be a contingent sentence contingent or consistent all this uh, kind of things one can talk about only provided we have uh, some a good translation. So let us uh, consider some examples of this translation. So uh, consider this particular kind of sentence uh, it says like this there are mental things that are not physical and there are physical things that are not mental whatever is uh, uh, pertaining to physical uh, domain will not be in the, in the mental kind of domain in the same way whatever is uh, there are physical things that are not considered to be mental. So now this is this consists of two sentences and all the first one is there are mental things that are not physical things. So this is a conjunction if you represent it in terms of uh, propositional logic this is simply this simply becomes P and Q. So that is not going to give us uh, the full information about what is there in this uh, particular kind of sentence. So we need to represent it in terms of uh, uh, quantifies then it makes some sense to talk about the inner structure of this particular kind of sentence. So now each part that is uh, there are two parts here separated by end uh, each part has its own quantifier. So there are two quantifiers also there are two negation operators that have uh, their own location. So one is talking about uh, not they are not physical that means the negation is already there in that and the other one is saying that they are not mental that means another kind of operator is there. So now this particular kind of statement can be translated in this way. So you so there are mental things that means not all the things are considered uh, considered to be not physical and all but there are at least one one particular kind of mental thing that is not that is considered to be not physical. So then in that sense uh, you represent it this, this this sentence as there exists some x where uh, x has 
x is considered to be a mental thing and then uh, that that particular kind of x is not considered to be a physical that is represented as not p x and this this takes care of the first part of the sentence and the second one there are physical things that are not mental again this is represented as there at least, there exists at least one particular kind of x uh, that x has to be a physical thing that is px and at the same time uh, x has to be not mental thing that is x uh, not m x so this whole formula is represented in this particular kind of thing so why we are not writing it like uh, there exists uh, for all x uh, mx not px because this sentence is talking about only uh, one particular kind of instance and that instance is like this there are some kind of uh, mental things that are not physical and there are some physical things that are not mental the word sum is not uh, involved in this particular kind of thing so basically uh, we will be uh, so since it is not talking about the talking about all the things so we usually mean it as uh, the uh, there is the usage of there is some kind of usage of the phrase sum in this particular kind of sentence so let us consider some more examples and then we will talk about uh, how we, we are going to translate these things into something. So let us consider another example it is like this everyone admires at least one person that one particular kind of person uh, admires everyone it is very ambiguously stated here. So now we need to go a little bit slow in this uh, while translating this particular kind of formula by breaking this sentence in a, an appropriate way. So now what this sentence says is, is that uh, everyone admires at least one person uh, let us say he is considered to be the father of the nation or something like that. So we admire that particular kind of uh, person like Nelson Mandela or Mahatma Gandhi etc and all who admires everyone that particular kind of person admires everyone. So now uh, this is can be broken into different parts and all so that uh, the translation uh, you, you will get some kind of uh, justification for this particular kind of translation. So first uh, thing is it why uh, there exists some kind of why uh, at least one person is there that that particular kind of person is why. So who admires everyone so that means for all why a y y uh, for all z uh, a y z is the thing which you need to write it here it is not a y y but a y z. So a y z means uh, y admires z so that z has to be for all z and all so whatever z you take into consideration uh, that y uh, y has to admire that particular kind of z. So now then the second step uh, let us consider there exists some another x and all x admires y if x admires y then y has to admire everyone. So that means the sentence uh, is translated as a x y and this particular kind of sentence for all z a y y. So what do we mean by saying that uh, here in a x y a stands for the predicate admires and then x and y they are uh, in, in one particular kind of order so x y simply means that x admires y it is not the case that y admires x and all there is some kind of order uh, which we follow in the predicate law if it is written as a y x then we say that y admires x but here uh, everyone admires at least one person who admires everyone. So who admires everyone is written as for all z a y z and then uh, this is a con this sentence is a conjunction of uh, this thing x admires y and y admires everyone so that is why a x y and for all z a y z. So now there is at least one person y whom x admires and in the same way y admires everyone. So that means uh, there exists at least one y is represented as there exists uh, with the existential quantifier there exists some y and then whatever sentence that we, we got it till now that is a x y and for all z a y z. So this will become 
there exists some y a x y and for all z a y z. So now for each x there is at least one y whom y whom x admires and y admires everyone. So now we need to uh, add another universal kind of quantifier that is for all x there exists some y and whatever sentence that is there a x y and for all z a y z. So this is the way to translate uh, this particular kind of ambiguous uh, sentence into uh, in an appropriate form uh, in this particular kind of way. So let us consider some more examples so that uh, uh, we will understand uh, this uh, idea in a, this translation in a better way. So uh, just we will consider some examples so that we will get used to this particular kind of translation. No woman, no woman loves every man. It may not be necessary that no woman loves every man and all. They might hate some human beings also. So it may not be necessary that women always love, all the time love every man and all. It may not be the case and all. So how to translate this particular kind of? Uh, thing in various step. So now, the f as a first step, you write it like this: no woman. So that particular woman, you consider it as X. Uh, it is such that, such that. So you just put it in bracket so that uh, we are separating this sentence, and we are handling these sentences by piece by piece. So now we have something called every man and all so every says that every man so now uh, woman is represented as x now man you represent it as y is such that such that so this is a second sentence and then whatever is left here is is that so that particular woman x loves y and all so now you write it like this x loves y. So what we have done here is, is that there exists some kind of woman there exists some kind of y that is considered to be a man and then the relation between x and y is like this x loves y it is not the case that y loves x and all. So this is one particular kind of order which we follow. So this sentence is translated in this particular kind of thing we are, we are trying to consider it in piece by piece. So no woman x is such that there exists uh, some kind of y and that y is meant for all the men and all and uh, that x loves all kind of men for, for all y. So now uh, you keep it as it is only no woman x is such that you keep it as it is now you translate this thing into uh, appropriately into the language of predicate law it says that every man y uh, is such that that means for all y uh, suppose if uh, y is considered to be a man then x is y if y is considered to be a man then x loves y and all. l stands for love f stands for man and all. so this happens for all y and all so that will take care of this particular kind of sentence these two sentences so now this translation is not at over so now we need to represent this thing, no woman x such that all these things should happen so now in the third step uh, no woman x such that means there does not exist some kind of uh, x, x stands for woman and y stands for man. So this will be uh, like this. there does not exist x such that you have to take another property into consideration g uh, so now g x implies Sorry, gx and there doesn't exist x, gx and 
uh, for all y this sentence whole sentence is for all i f y implies l x y. So, what it essentially says is that we just broken this sentence into this thing every man y is uh, uh, such that x loves y this is represented as this thing for all y for uh, if y is considered to be a man then x loves uh, man. So, this happens for all y and then in the first sentence no woman x is such that uh, is represented as this thing there does not exist some x such that x is g and at the same time for all y if y is a man and x loves y now. So, now uh, this can further be translated uh, in this sense. So, this says that there does not exist some x all this formula now. So, now we have uh, some kind of uh, translations if you come across a formula like this there does not exist uh, some x p x is same as this negation goes inside and the negation of the existential quantifier will become like this. So, now this this will become like this so I will write it here there does not exist uh, this thing means for all x uh, you have to push this negation inside and then so this is conjunction negation this will become not g x and the negation of conjunction will become disjunction and then this is negation of for all y f y implies uh, l c l x y. So, now you can further simplify it and then you can write it like this. So, this is like uh, not x or y. So, not x or y same as x implies y. So, now you can write it like this g x implies um, for all y this will be same you know f y implies l x y. So, now this is the translation of this particular kind of thing. So, no woman loves every man <laughs> in some 3 or 4 steps is translated in this particular kind of way. So, so this essentially says that for all x if x is uh, having some kind of property g and then does not mean that x is a woman uh, then there does not exist uh, it is not for all y if y is a man uh, then that particular kind of x has to love this particular kind of man. So, that means no woman needs to love every man. So, this is the way to translate it is just one more example we take into consideration and then we will move on to some other kind of translations. So, now uh, let us consider one more uh, example uh, no man uh, no man who loves Rani uh, loves Rajesh R no man who loves Rani loves Rajesh R Rajesh R Kapil let us say let us try to translate this one. So, now you need to represent this constants with there are three people who exist here Rani Rajesh and Kapil we need to represent it with some kind of symbols. So, now this is same as no man who who loves Rani is such that. So, this is going to be the first sentence uh, we are breaking it into uh, uh, 3 parts. So, that uh, it will become convenient to uh, translate this particular kind of sentence into the language of predicate logic. No man who loves Rani is such that. So, the idea here is is that uh, 
no man who loves Rani loves uh, Rajesh or Kapil. Uh, so that is the one which we are trying to translate it. So x x loves x loves Rajesh uh, or x loves Kapil. So now this x loves Rajesh is uh, represented in this thing L stands for a uh, predicate L x uh, x loves Rajesh is represented as R R and the second sentence x loves Kapil is represented as this thing K stands for Kapil and x loves K is represented in this sense. So now we have taken care of the sentence which is on the right hand side so now we need to take care of this particular kind of sentence no man who loves Rani is such that. so now so this is represented as this thing there does not exist some x where uh, f of x and this particular kind of uh, x and n so where uh, this is represented as n is represented as R and this is K. So these are the three constants that we have the individuals which exist in this particular kind of sentence Rani, Rajesh and Kapil. So now this says that there does not exist some X such that X is considered to be uh, that particular kind of man and then X loves N uh, and this happens for and this particular kind of sentence so that is L X R L X K this says that there does not exist some that particular kind of person X so that you know X X is a man and X loves Rani and at the same time uh, he will do this particular kind of X loves Rajesh and X loves K uh, so now this is same as uh, this thing not for all x uh, there exists some x will become for all x and you push this negation inside and this will become f of x l x n and uh, negation of conjunction will become disjunction and it will become l x k. So this is uh, going to be the translation of uh, uh, this sentence no man who loves Rani loves Rajesh or uh, Kapil. So like this uh, one can translate uh, uh, the given English language sentence into the language of uh, predicate logic uh, by breaking that particular kind of sentence into uh, one or two different parts and all first you manage the right, right uh, whatever exists in the right most of this particular kind of uh, sentence and then you extend it to the whatever is there in the left hand side of this particular kind of sentence. So, so uh, while discussing the traditional logic uh, we discussed about four different kinds of sentences and then it will have its own translations in the modern logic like this. So there are four particular kind of uh, sentences which we call it as categorical uh, statements categorical propositions so they are a i e and o. So suppose if you uh, suppose that universe of discourse to be everything let us say you know you are talking about uh, uh, people all kinds of people will come into that particular kind of domain uh, and let S X be uh, X is uh, having some kind of property S yes, and P X stands for X is having some kind of property P it can be mortality it can be beautiful handsome etc all these things. So now A E I O propositions are uh, represented in this particular kind of way I proposition it is like some men are mortal so it is represented in this sense there is at least one x such that x is having property s and x is also having property p so this is simply represented as there exists some x uh, sx and px so this is uh, as good as saying that some birds can uh, some birds flies O statement is exactly O sentence can be represented in this sense there is some X such that X is S but it is false that X is P 
So, it is simply represented as there exists some x s x and not p x. So, these are considered to be particular kind of categorical propositions and then there are universal propositions such as a and e. A proposition is stated in this sense for, for any x for every x if x is having property s then x is also having property p to say that all birds flies uh, if x is a considered to be a bird and x has to fly it cannot be the case that x is considered to be a bird and x does not fly at all. So, it is represented as for all x if x is having property s implies x is having property p. So, now e proposition is also considered to be universal categorical proposition it's, it states that for any x if x is having property s then it is false that x is having property p if that is the case then you write it in this way for all x s x implies not p x. Uh, so, now uh, let us uh, talk about uh, a relation between these four kind of categorical propositions and then we will uh, try to stop this lecture. So, this is the uh, square of opposition uh, uh, which you which we discussed it uh, while doing traditional logic. So, it is like this on the one hand we have categorical universal propositions a proposition and e proposition and then you have an i proposition and you have a o proposition usually diagonals are considered to be contradictory to each other. So, these are all contradictory to each other. So, let us represent these things uh, a proposition is represented in this sense for all x p x implies q x. So, before all these things you need to talk about some kind of domain etcetera and all uh, where p and q are considered to be properties and x are some kind of individual uh, some kind of variables which, uh, which can be further represented by some kind of individual objects. So, now this is for all x uh, p x implies q x and i proposition is represented in these things existential quantifier p x and q x and then o proposition there exists some x uh, x is having property p and then uh, uh, this is the thing x is not having property q and then e proposition is like this for all x uh, p x x is having property p implies it does not x is not having property q. So, these are the things uh, which we need to note a and o are contradictory to each other if you take the conjunction of this thing that is going to become uh, you are going to have the value f in the same way there exists some x p x and q x and for all x p x uh, not q x. So, these are two uh, these are contradictory to each other. So, for example, if you say that uh, uh, all birds flies and all suppose if you come across one particular kind of bird x and x uh, does not fly then that contradicts this particular kind of proposition that all birds flies. So, in the same way if you say that some uh, some birds uh, flies and all and then you come across a proposition that for all x if x is a bird and x does not fly. So, this is exactly contradictory to this particular kind of thing. So, that means a and o are contradictory to each other and i and e are contradictory to each other. So, this is what we consider to be a square of opposition in the predicate logic, but there are some other kinds of inferences which might be of interest to us whether from a proposition that is for all x a p x implies q x can we deduce uh, uh, that um, there exists some x p x and q x or uh, for example, if you say that for all x p x uh, you deduce a proposition that uh, you infer uh, there exists some x p x. It looks uh, simple for us, but uh, it leads to uh, some kind of problems which are which we discussed it partly while doing traditional logics that is called as the problem of existential import uh, like this there are uh, some other kind of uh, translations one one can do uh, we have to we need to practice a lot uh, for doing this particular kind of uh, translation let us consider some uh, some one or two examples and then we will close this uh, 
lecture and all. So let us consider this example all animals that can fly are either not humans or not fish. So here we need to break this sentence into break the sentence like this either not humans are not not fish is represented in this sense not hx or not lx so that is what is the thing and all and then all animals that can fly is represented in these things animals that can fly is represented in this sense if x is an animal and x has to fly so that is why this whole formula is quantified over all animals that is why for all x ax and fx implies not hx or not i x because we are talking about not humans and not fish so in the same way for example you want to represent no persons on the moon can talk or sing so usually that should be in this particular kind of format for all x px and not qx so the last sentence should be negation of that particular kind of thing so no persons on the moon persons on the moon is represented as px and mx and then they can talk or sing is represented in this particular kind of thing not of tx or sx so like this one can translate various kinds of sentences that occur in the English language into the language of predicate logic so some of the things will look ambiguous for us but if you break that particular kind of sentence into two or three parts and all then things will become easy to handle some examples which we have taken into consideration but it requires a lot of practice so this translation is considered to be very important because once you translate a given language a given sentence into the language of the predicate logic and then things will become simpler and then you can talk about validity etc consistency etc later so in this class what we have discussed is is that we have talk, first we began with uh, uh, when, when do we uh, when can we say that a particular kind of formula is an instance of uh, an universal uh, kind of a formula which consists of universal kind of quantifier so we have talked about substitution instances of a given formula so we can substitute only when we have some kind of variables in so then we moved on to some kind of loss of quantifiers uh, then we talked about an interesting uh, uh, observation we 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 gave an we we come up with an instant interesting observation that whenever you have uh, uh, two different quantifiers then uh, it makes uh, the scope is going to become relevant uh, scope of a quantifier is going to be become relevant whenever you don't have this particular kind of uh, uh, you don't have the same kind of uh, we, if we have the same kind of quantifiers then doesn't make any big difference it's going to be relevant irrelevant to the uh, it, it won't play any role in that particular kind of formula that means it is as good as saying that for all x for all y is same as for all y for all x some kind of p x y is the case so in the uh, so then we talked about some kind of translations uh, and then we need to practice a lot with this particular kind of translations and then uh, in the next class what we are going to do is we'll be talking about the semantics of uh, a given uh, semantics of predicate logic and then we will move on to various kinds of decision procedure methods